Hey guys, I'm back. Um, so today, uh, continuing where we left off, I thought it would be uh, ideal to add something that's common in most synthesizers, which is a low-pass filter. And um, it's actually pretty easy to implement that. Um, so to do that, uh, what we're going to do is first we're going to just move everything before the uh, before the audio outs we're just gonna move that back a little bit because we're gonna be dealing in this area here um, so I guess I was just gonna put a filter on everything that was coming out of you know right before the master outs you know so that what we affect is we affect the whole synthesizer um, so I'm just gonna delete well First, I'll add a filter, which if you just right-click, go to built-in module filter, and I'm going to go with a um, low-pass four-pole. So, if you're wondering what that means, um, I guess if you look at the screenshot here, um, this is a two pole low pass filter. It means that it there's an attenuation curve of 12 decibels, which you don't really need. The curve is not as steep as a four pole. I, I guess I'll just leave it at that. So basically what a low pass filter is, for those of you who don't know, it, it's basically a, uh, a filter that lets the lowest frequencies pass through. So Everything south of, well, everything south. Everything to the left is what's let through, and everything above that is cut off. And then if you look here, a low-pass four-pole filter uh, is basically this, you know, the same principle, but with a steeper curve. The cutoff is more sharp and noticeable. Um, so for our purposes, I think a two-pole sounds nicer, so I'm just going to use that. So, in order to get that to work, uh, we're just going to delete the, uh, the connections here and here. And um, then, so obviously, we're going to have the audio signal. You know, it's going to go into the, uh, this is the audio in here. Make sure that your overall audio signal is going out here. And then, uh, the resonance. So if you notice this little peak here on this on the little diagram that they're showing us for the four pole filter module, that is the resonance basically. And if the resonance is at zero, there's no curve. It means that it's just going to be a perfectly flat um, re uh, response at where the filter begins attenuating. But uh, if you have, you can have any values between zero and one for your resonance, which basically what resonance does for the ear, it sounds like um, it, it gives a little bit of grind or bite to the sound. Um, basically, it's do always make sure that that value is below one. Um, so actually, yeah, what we're gonna do next here is we're just gonna add. Uh, we're just gonna go to math, then we're gonna add a constant, and we're gonna change the value to 0.5. I think that's a good middle ground value. So then we're just gonna connect that to the resonance. Okay, so the the P is interesting. Um, what Reactor offers for this is something called lo logarithmic pitch control, which means it takes, um, basically it interprets these as MIDI notes. So for example, A440 is number 69 in MIDI. And so what's actually happening is the note pitch is sending the value of 69 to this output. If I was just to go from the pit note pitch to the P input on the, over here. Um, and what that does is it, it the filter cutoff point is where 
the pitch lands when you play a note. So I guess um, it basically means that the filter will sound consistent for all the notes. Um, so I guess to give you an idea of what that sound like, let's connect the low pass two pole filter over here and here. And then I'll just uh, play a note. You can barely hear that. But notice that the notes sound consistent between each other, whether whether I play high notes or low notes. Um, that's one of the benefits of that. But uh, it, yeah. So, but actually. If you want to, so most of us, however, don't want to, we want to have a little more control over our filter. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to make it so that we can control it with a knob. And obviously, you know, going back on our previous learning built-in module panel, we're going to add a knob and I'm going to call it a filter. And... <coughs> Then we're just going to go to our panel, move our newly created knob down here. Looks good, I guess. Um, okay, so now we have a knob that has a filter. Um, so this is the, the easiest solution I found. Uh, there's probably a better way, but this is, you know, this is help you get an idea of how to get a filter working. I'm going to delete the line we made between the note pitch and the four pole. And instead of controlling it with the note pitch, we're going to control it with, with a knob. So now remember that this pitch input only takes in MIDI notes, right? It takes, or it takes in MIDI values that it then converts to frequency. What we want to uh, do is control it, is control it based on the frequency, not on the MIDI notes. So, um, how we how we do that first? I'm going to change the uh, max value. If you click on this and make sure you click on properties, change this to uh, twenty thousand two zero 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 zero. And uh, again, this isn't a perfect example, but I'll show you how this how this works here. Um, okay, so now we have the, the, the actual frequency values that we want to mess with and not the MIDI notes. However, this only takes in MIDI notes. So if we just played this right now, it would sound really bad. So I'm not even going to try. I don't know if that would have implications on the speakers or what. Um, actually, no, it wouldn't. We can try this. Uh, so right now, uh, it would be sending... Uh, let's see, what would it be sending? In order for the freak, for the uh, value to have its effect, if you go up here to the filter, and mm, this might not be the best example right now, but see, notice that when I make changes, it doesn't even it doesn't even recognize them unless it's at zero, in which it cuts all the audio off. See, it's not even interpreting these higher values because it's reading MIDI notes that only go up to 127 and the resolution of this knob is so low that it only goes as low as zero and the next step is 157, which is way off. So how do we fix this? Well, we go to built-in module. Um, we go to we go to math again. Aren't we loving this math? We're using lots of math here. It makes you feel really smart, right? Um, so in math, uh, you have this thing where it says log and exponent, and it looks really scary, but this is how you convert the... Um, this is how we get what we need to get done done. Uh, you want to make sure you hit the log F, right? So basically what that does is now it looks a little less scary because on this side you have frequency well if we go to, over to info here it says logarithm for converting linear frequency values in Hertz to logarithmic pitch values in semitones 
So basically what we're going to do is we're going to take the frequency uh, that is output from the knob, from the filter controlling knob, and convert it into the pitch algorithms or the MIDI notes that the filter is expecting. So we're just going to delete this path and we're going to go from filter to F and then P to P. So now the filter will actually should actually do what we were hoping it would do in the first place. So yeah, notice when I play a note now it's, it sounds really low. But as I... Now it sounds more like the filter we're used to. And the resolution is really choppy. Um, I'm not quite sure how to fix that yet, but uh, one way you could do it is make the step size something smaller, like 10, and turn the mouse res. And then this will change the number of steps, you know, in the knob, and then change the mouse resolution to match that. So now when you move it, you know, your mouse won't have as much of an effect on the knob as you move it up and down, but at least the, the it'll be a smoother filter for you to mess with. So. And I don't have a MIDI controller, you know, it'd probably be faster if I did to do this stuff. And if you want to do the MIDI, you know, if you have a, a control surface or whatever, hooked up, um, you just right click and you hit MIDI learn and then you twirl the knob that you want to set it to. It's pretty pretty straightforward. Um, I'm just using my mouse right now. But yeah, there you go. So now we have a basic low pass filter. And uh, in the next tutorial, we'll start getting into, you know, really starting to make the synth do the stuff that we, you know, that a, you know, like a, a standard synth would do any commercial synth, like uh, multi-oscillators. Uh, we'll have envelopes for the filters instead of just one knob. Um, things like that. Alright, well, thanks again for watching, and we will see you next time.